What if I told you that computers can be powered by your brain cells? Sounds mad, eh? Really mad, eh? What do you think? Oh my gosh. But this is real and it's a whole new frontier that could actually help solve one of the biggest problems we're facing, the global energy crisis that's coming with AI. So let's unpack this together. The first question we need to answer is what is organoid intelligence? Now imagine a human mini brain, literally 3D clusters of living brain cells in a dish. These cells live, grow, and fire. Now think about your neurons. When they collide, they create electricity. This is what the scientists are monitoring. It's just like your own neurons, this dish with a mini brain. Now picture wiring that mini brain to electronics so it can learn, respond, and compute. That's organoid intelligence. It's biology that meets technology, and it's the new frontier of biotechnology. So here is why it exists. So silicon computers, the ones that run everything we do today, are energy-hungry beasts. They're fast, but they burn through resources like there's no tomorrow. And this is really creating a lot of concerns in the investor confidence. So every time you or I type, or prompt into ChatGPT, that one question uses enough water to fill a 500 milliliter bottle. Multiply that by millions of users every day and you start seeing why data centers need massive cooling systems just to say, alive. Nature's brain, on the other hand, runs on the banana and a glass of water. It's ultra energy efficient, adaptive, and learns without energy tanks. That's the magic. Nat Nature's already figured this out. Nature solved the problems we keep reinventing. So let's go back in time a little bit. So this didn't just happen overnight. In the early 2010, scientists were growing mini brains to study diseases, but by then something shifted. Technology hit a wall. AI was exploding, data was ballooning, and energy demand was skyrocketing. So researchers started asking, what if we could compute with biology instead of burning through electricity? By the 2020s, prototypes started surfacing, startups got funded, governments backed ethical biocomputing, and suddenly we had our first biological computers. But it's important to note that this is still experimental, not mainstream, but it is happening and it's moving fast. Now the latest development, these tiny organoids are starting to show learning-like behavior. Scientists can now rent access to them online. They call it wetware as a service. It's a very odd way to think about it, but that's what they call it. Think of it like cloud computing, but instead of renting space on the server, you're renting time on a living brain cell network. It's not for the speed, it is for the experimentation at this point. But companies and universities use it to study learning patterns, energy efficiency, and how biological systems adapt in real time. So you're probably thinking, this is crazy, and you might be indecisive about this, and I get you, because I feel exactly the same way. You see, what problem is this really solving, not just be beyond the energy? Let's think a little bit bigger. The big win here is energy, but every country is an AI arms race. But the hidden cost is electricity and energy, and data centers already use more power than some nations. So organoid intelligence could flip that completely. These living computers could compute complex problems using a fraction of the power. Now, I want to give you a little example. Our brains have about 86 billion neurons. Now, in order to power one computer, you need about 50,000 to 80,000 or 800,000 neurons. Now, a brain's power of 86 billion neurons only uses 20 watts. That is like a light bulb. So this shows you the energy efficiency that comes from organoid intelligence if it can be figured out. Now imagine a world where we could run global AI systems powered by nature, not fossil fuels. That's why this matters. So let's talk about the good because there is a lot of it. The research could lead to medical miracles. By studying these mini brains, we can understand our, our own better, unlocking new treatments for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even trauma recovery. If that's not already in the pipeline, it also opens the door of AI for good. Take that learns like nature, not against it. Sustainable computing, respecting living systems. 
It could spark an energy revolution that's regenerative, not extractive. But here is the bad side. Because in the wrong hands, this becomes biocapitalism, where living systems becomes commodities and where consent gets blurry, whose cells are being used, and where profit starts to matter more than ethics and humanity. Some fear a future where brains for higher power military systems or surveillance tech that this is leading into a dystopian version of innovation without humanity. So let's look at the beyond. What happens if these living computers evolve consciousness? What if we create synthetic empathy, systems that can teach us something about ourselves and how to be more understanding and how to be more e effective and efficient? Maybe that's the next moral frontier, redefining what it means to be alive. Maybe it's about seeing divinity and creation and rediscovering what creativity really is. We don't have the answers, but I would love to know what you think. So type in the comments below and let's have a conversation. That's it from me. The future doesn't happen to us, we happen to the future.